Woohoo! That was fantastic! It was so cool! Spinel was amazing antagonist! The characters were so fun! Steven was super relatable! Nothing can ruin this movie! Are you sure about that? Come on, man! Don't ruin this for me! Just, just let me turn my brain off and enjoy this! You're the reason I hate season 5! Did you like the songs? It's a musical! Of course I enjoyed the songs! Other Friends was my favorite! Okay... Sing one sentence from any of the other songs. I'll wait. That's easy. Um, isn't it love? Died in the pa- Oh my god, they're all forgettable. My work here is done. You son of a rose, I'll kill you! Hi everyone, this is Sarcastic Chorus, and it's time to talk about the Universe Movie. Which, if I'm being honest, is your standard anime movie where one new character gets all the development, while everyone else is pretty much static. Still fun though, but I'm gonna tear into this real hard. Just keep that in mind, this is for comedy. I'm not fully serious here. Story opens with a storybook. Cute or pretentious, you decide. Yada yada yada, recap of everything, Steven is the savior, we know, we've seen the story. Cut to actual next Steven, who has apparently spent the last few years dismantling the Jam Empire. I don't want to say this is a reaction to fan outrage, but it definitely feeds into somebody's bad faith narrative. Everything is hunky-dory, does all the work Steven has brought galactic peace, but is ignoring the diamonds who are now obsessed with Steven. Wanting to keep him around and adore him. Wow sidestepping the annoying aunt angle they're using to keep us from thinking about genocide, this is anime harem level of character dependency. Not into it, Steven dips back home and we enter the next song, Happily Ever After. Or Bitch You Thought song. Gets a kiss from, oh are they dating now Connie, who proceeds to disappear for the rest of the movie. Every 16 year old Steven thinks he finally has life figured out. Recap is a major part of this show. And it's not a cute, oh, remember how far we've come? It's a very, oh no, let's just repeat everything we've done. Just gonna skip through this. Chekhov Gun Steven reveals he can heal flowers by kissing them. Penetration device shows up. And for a brief five minutes, I had a hope for this plot. XJ Cuphead insert lookalike here Spinel pops up. She is the best part of this movie, but it's a low bar. All the info Pearl recognizes her, but she's a crystal gem, so she contributes nothing vocally. Pissed off Toy Spinel rants about losing, starts other friends, or the best one. More great animation, crystal jokes get wrecked. Like a punk Steven gets slashed, but doesn't get poofed. Spinel, who breaks apart and fizzles out just when the story was getting good. Then to my horror, I realized what this story was going to be mostly about. Retreading character development to get the now amnesiac gems back to normal. In the beach house, the other gems are starting to wake up, but have been set back to default. Great, Toy Story 2 and 3 plot points in here. That's exactly what I want out of a Steven Universe movie. Weird Shit Pearl has now creeped out Greg's slave. She sings System Boot Pearl, the You Own Me song. Blockhead Ruby is a bodyguard. Dole Machine Sapphire is here too. And the whole time, Recap Pearl is telling us what the job of each gem is. I'm in teams of three or more. Yeah, that figures. Baby Amethyst is a parrot. Spinel is now cringe. And is a best friend slash toy. I love that the diamonds took the time to make a type of gem to entertain them, rather than interacting with other gems. Everyone is reset, Steven can't use his powers, and Spinel doesn't remember how to turn off the injector, which she miraculously was able to acquire. Running out of options, can't afford the cast even, goes to the Crystal B team, who I like more than the originals. Why they just sat around? Well, this thing landed is anyone's guess, though. They hand wave keeping the diamonds out of the story. How do we reverse this? Oh no. Do I need to get the diamonds? You're the one with healing powers. If anyone can fix this, it's you. You know, I think I would have liked it better if they just didn't address it. Main Woman Bismuth sings Who We Are, the We Get Shit Done song. Man. I wish she was in the show more. Wasting time to decorate, one small JoJo reference later, they finish up. It's like that the rules for this amnesia case is that the people will get their memories back if they repeat that character's backstory. While going through the weapons to traumatize the children, things get out of hand and reverse role Sapphire has to save Ruby. They fuse together and we get Isn't It Love, the bullshit song. Love at first sight doesn't exist. Love takes time 
and love takes work. Do you guys remember your own story? Con Candy Garnet still doesn't remember who she is, but can't focus on that. We need to find a missing child amethyst. Finding her in a burnt out housewife's art gallery, songs galore Steven finally has an excuse to sing, no matter what. AKA, you'll forget it in the morning. We had a tap dance scene. God. How the fuck does he do that in sandals? Amethyst all of a sudden gets her memory back? Huh, I guess all those hours of listening to Steven's mixtape must have been pretty traumatizing for her. Oh yeah, and the plant's dying. Things are looking pretty dire, so it's time for more songs. We hear every song of Guitar Hero Disobedient, AKA not Paramore. Realizing they need to emotionally break Pearl to get her back, they try turning into Rose, but that fails. Pulling out the big guns, they turn into Testoster, oh my Steg. Definitely gets around Steg, sings independent together. AKA everyone you love is gone, so step up. The married couple sings some more. The camera really wants to bang Steg Bravo. Struggling Steven is not doing too hot with his reset powers. Oh my god, this was in the Danny Phantom finale. Pulling back to emotionally damaged Spinel, who runs away, taking overused POV to Rose's old garden. Back in the day, abused tyrant Pink used to play with Spinel. Then Pink got a colony and then lied to Spinel and had her wait forever. This is told via Drift Away, aka you hate Pink Diamond now. So Spinel snapped, and at some point from when Steven made his announcement to when he finished singing on Earth, Spinel traveled to Earth, got an injector, and had a costume change. Time dilation? Talking things out, Steven talks things out and sings found, AKA all lies. Telling her she needs to find someone to treat her better. Not that she should be her own person, that she'll eventually find someone to give her value. Yikes. Back at home, the gems nearly attack Spinel because of course they do. Riding in on a Kira reference, Connie shows up. Hand horn Spinel deactivates a machine. Yep, that's what I thought. I'm done with you Steven is focusing on fixing Garnet and himself, completely ignoring nervous Rex Spinel who clearly needs lots of love and attention, but Steven doesn't have time for that. The scythe drops and Spinel thinks Steven was going to revert her back. An idiot for the plot, Steven just holds the weapon till Spinel freaks out and turns evil again. Death Machine is back on, Crazy Eye Spinel has Garnet as a hostage. Should have done this 10 minutes ago, Steven breaks the scythe yelling the truth. The truth. You've got to be kidding me. Sudden Memory Garnet is back. We hear true kind of love. It's the truth. For a Klondike bar. Working there, they're able to beat Tutor Own Horn Spinel. The Death Machine dumps all of its life killing juice onto the town. The gems have to rush to save everyone else, leaving Broken Steven to save the day. What a shocker. Over all of this, Steven tries again to talk with the whack job, but gets decked in the face for it. He gets a nosebleed. Big whoop. Zack summarizes the entire show. I did it! Huh? Why are my powers back? Aren't I reliving every horrible thing that's ever happened to me? A gem I barely know is trying to kill me. I'm paying for stuff my mom did that had nothing to do with me. I'm struggling with my powers. The world's about to end. What piece could I be missing? This is the story of my life! I felt that. Steven realizes he has the power to change. There you go, people. The big lesson. We can all change. Powers are back, time to start singing. We get to hear change, song solves everything. So between blows, appeals Steven keeps trying to get Gum Gum Spinel to calm down. Just can it, won't ya? You can't just make everything better by singing some stupid song. She rejects him until she doesn't. What am I doing? Why do I wanna hurt you so bad? Boom goes the device. Steven saves Spinel, ending the main conflict. Steven literally kisses and makes everything all better. Then the diamonds show up, wanting to move in. Hell no. Giving Spinel to the diamonds so that she can be their replacement for Pink and a morally complex character is back to being treated like a toy. We get epilogue, final big number, and that's it. So my real thoughts slash review of this film. This is the perfect example of an all right movie. And your enjoyment of this film is based entirely on your expectations going in. If you want this to be a story that fixes the problematic elements of the finale, sorry, not gonna happen. In fact, they are going to keep sweeping those elements under the rug entirely. If you just want a fun romp to distract yourself for an hour and a half, this movie will do the trick. Honestly, my main praises for the film really come down to two main elements, Spinel and the animation. Spinel is easily the best part of this film. From the way she's animated to her performance, you really 
feel for her and understand where she's coming from. Her backstory, while dumb and cliche, is still nonetheless engaging. While personally I would much rather have seen a backstory that didn't involve making Rose look even worse than she already does, but I'll put a pin in that. Spinel on an emotional level works. Even if she is just a blend of Stinky Pete and Jesse from Toy Story, there is so much pathos to her character, that wanting to be better but she still finds herself slipping back into her negative tendencies inflicting pain on others for no other reason than to give their trauma meaning. You know what we know what she's doing is wrong, we understand why she's doing it. This film is the most solid the series has ever looked. The one issue I've had with Steven Universe for a while now is its overly flat camera angles and storyboarding. There's huge stretches of the show that just feels like it's shot like a stage play, so a lot of the scenes come off as low energy and unengaging. Here it's kind of okay because this is a big send off to the stage musical of old, but it's a problem in the main show and it carries over here. Now, on to the negatives. And let's start out with the one thing that is sure to give me the most death threats. The songs don't impress me. Oh sure, they're fun and they're sung very well, they have good energy, but the first time I watched this film, I could not tell you a single song that wasn't Spinell's. All the other ones just blend together and it feels like the same medium energy show tune. And sure, they're different enough from when they're watching. It's like one of those lo-fi playlists on Spotify where you listen to music for two hours and not remember any of the individual tracks you listen to. Hey, I might be crazy and this soundtrack can be better than any Disney film, but it's my opinions, so there it is. Now a lot of people have freaked out about how Steg is so sexy, it's like, oh why is a father and son? like this, but crew clearly thought this was going to be like a fun rocking vibe and just went with it. Fusion can be interesting and thought provoking, sometimes. Other times it's just an excuse to do cool shit. I'm more annoyed about how Pearl's entire character arc is boiled down to lost her master rather than the five seasons of becoming her own independent person. Like Garnet finding love again, I get. Amethyst marching to the beat of her own drum, yeah I can see that. But this, yes, slave that lost her master, that's an arc that will inspire me. And while we're on the subject of masters, okay, what the fuck is up with Pink Diamond's character? As funny as this line is, I can't believe mom did that to you. Actually, I can totally believe it. I feel like in this post pink reveal, nearly every new piece of information we learn about her makes her seem like worse of a person. And before you start ranting the comments, oh, she changed, so that makes it okay. No, it doesn't. When was the last time we ever heard something good about Pink? For being the first gem to recognize the value of organic life and let a rebellion protect it, the writers seem hell-bent on making Pink out to be the bad diamond, despite the fact that she's basically a saint when compared to the other ones. And I know the writers want to make Pink seem worse to add more drama to Steven's character, but it starts to get pretty suspect when Pink gets thrown into the negative light so often while White and the others get portrayed as these overly clingy aunts. They were wiping out life and shattering gems for millions of years, but the show would rather leave this undressed so they can keep the general audience from calling for all their heads. And I think Spinell leaving with the diamonds is also messed up from a character standpoint. This show bends over backwards to help Pearl get over Rose, but Spinell is basically thrown into the diamond's lap, effectively trading one owner for another, giving the diamonds a replacement for pink, and it just feels wrong. Shouldn't Spinell's arc be she becomes her own person, gaining friends that wouldn't treat her the way pink did? And this leads into one of the major problems I have with this show, which is the writer's flip-flop whether gems should be treated as people or objects. The ending for Spinell works if you buy into the idea she's a toy who needs a new owner, not the thinking, feeling person we've seen her to be. When it's convenient for the story to hand wave Jem's behavior, no, it was just their programming, so they shouldn't be held accountable, but then the story turns around and insists they can change, which implies they could always change, and then it becomes a problem of why didn't they? The excuse that the gems are quasi-machines falls apart when the show ends with them supposedly all becoming free, disapproving the latter, and the fact that the show keeps flip-flopping between these two ideas is frustrating and I hate it. But all problems aside, I did enjoy Steven Universe the movie. Yep. But it baffles me how this show can handle nuance and complex issues skillfully sometimes, but can continually drop the ball when it comes to others. If you like Steven Universe, you'll enjoy this. I'm honestly holding my breath for future, which I will start reviewing episode to episode. Then do one big sarcastic summary for the whole season. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. 
I recently created a Patreon, so please give whatever you can. Help me keep the lights on around here. Every little bit helps and keeps me motivated to pursue my passion. Peace out, Sarcast fans, and stay honest.